Welcome to today's edition of Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies. But to start things off, what are we drinking today? We are drinking a nice Italian red. Mm. Fitting for the movie we're about to cover. You betcha. Today we're going to be covering 1976's The House with Laughing Windows. This was a Patreon request. It was requested to us by Alex Caligaropoulos. I hope I said that right. <laughs> it was written and directed by Pupi Avati. It stars Lino Capaluccio along with Francesca Marciano. Whew! <laughs> Those names! The opening credits of this movie is really cool. It shows this guy kind of strung up and he's getting stabbed. You hear this guy talking and he's talking about, oh my colors, my colors, my colors are in my veins. We get introduced to the main character Stefano and he arrives in a small village to restore this painting in this old church. The painting is thought to be of the murder of Saint Sebastian. Him strung up and these two women on either side that are stabbing him. The priest also goes on to describe the painter and he was kind of known as the painter of agony. Paint people at the moment of dying, at the moment of death. While Stefano is in town, he uh, meets up with his buddy Dr. Maza, tells him that the village has this weird history to it. And there's also the house with laughing windows. He gets a phone call from Dr. Maza. I have to tell you more about this uh, this house. And he sees him actually get thrown or he throws himself out of a window. And he looks up and he sees like this shadow kind of walk across the window. And everybody's coming out all frantic. Oh, he killed himself. So he gets back to his hotel room tells him that there's this important client that's coming by tomorrow and oh, we gave him your room. I, uh, you understand. What the <laughs> fuck? You have to go now. <laughs> the altar boy comes up to him and he's, he's all weird and always laughing, but he has a house that Stefano can stay in. He brings him to this house and it's empty except for one room which is occupied by the owner of the house, this old woman who's bedridden but she's happy to have the company. He stumbles upon this old, old looking tape recorder in the attic. He plays it and it's the same kind of raving madman that we heard in the opening credits talking, oh my colors. He starts to figure that this is the madman painter who painted the same painting I'm restoring. He also finds a love interest in the substitute school teacher. Only known each other maybe a couple of days or something. He's if like, that. You can move in with me. <laughs> well, first of all, it's not even your fucking house. Stefano actually stumbles upon this house that his buddy was telling him about, the house with the laughing windows. In this house, he finds his trunk. And in the trunk is this diary, which is the Madman Painter's Diary. He finds out through this diary that the Madman had these two sisters, and they would help him capturing people and murdering the, the, the captive so he has like a subject to paint right. while they're dying. He finds out through the archives that the painter went mad one night and doused himself in gasoline and set himself on fire and just ran into the woods but no body was ever discovered. Yeah, he's like presumed, presumed dead. dead. You know, <laughs> the, the guy, the guy in the archives keeps saying presumed dead, yeah. presumed yeah, dead. Yeah. Do you want me to keep repeating it? <laughs> so Stefano is finally pretty much done restoring this painting, and he comes back to the church one day, <laughs> and it is destroyed. <laughs> Explains this to Francesca, and they're both kind of scared. Like mm -hmm. something is wrong. Something is kind of out to get us here. Fuck it, we're gonna leave. Drops off his bicycle he was renting or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> he gets back home, Francesca's missing. He looks throughout the whole house, goes up in the attic, and she's strung up very similar to the painting that he was restoring, and she's been murdered. She's all stabbed and covered in blood. The police come and everything is missing. There's no body, there's no blood, it's all clean. Then he takes the police to the house of the laughing window and says, well, they used to bring their victims here and they, they're digging all these holes to try to find where the victims are buried and with those super, super tiny small shovels, shovel, like, yeah, they're gonna go nowhere pretty quick. So Stefano's back at the police station, he's exhausted, he's just mentally exhausted, and he gets a phone call and it's Francesca saying, Meet me back at the house. And that's where we're gonna end the plot. If you wanna find out how the house with laughing windows ends 
Well, make sure to watch the movie. So one of the best things about this movie is the setting, right? The town where this takes place. It's all kind of decayed, yeah. old, presumably left over from the war. Yeah. Right? Which would explain the decay. Feeling that this story of the madman painter is kind of hovering over the town. It's almost stopping it from developing and <laughs> right. rebuilding itself. It's kind of always at the state of decay. The time period is also interesting because they never really come out and say, this is when it takes place. Mm -hmm. They give you hints. The painter killed himself 20 years ago. Okay, well, when was 20 years ago? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then later on, they say, oh, the painter killed himself. It was uh, 1931. Like, okay, so this takes place, I guess, early 50s. But they don't shove it in your throat, you know, yeah. like some movies do. Which I really liked. I found that refreshing. The cinematography is also very nice, especially a lot of the outdoor shots mm -hmm. on, the, on the river and in the fields and stuff like that. When you see the... The house in the the house of laughing windows in the field, like it's very nice looking. It's beautiful looking, yeah. but it's also scary at the same time. <laughs> That's right, and it, it actually does make you believe that it's in Italy. It has its own color scheme, but it's not as in your face as some of these other Italian films, mm -hmm. where it's always super bright and vivid and like. Yeah, it's a little more drab, yeah. kind of drawn out. Right? Which is nice because you're gonna get that deathly decaying vibe of the town with with those kind of softer colors. The music is great in this too. It's dreamy. Works perfectly for every scene I find. The movie does uh, do a very good job of sucking you in and making mm -hmm. you feel like you're in this weird town. Yeah, this weird world. The pacing is great for this movie too. You're never bored. For me personally, I always find foreign films, I find that they start to drag after a while. And this one, for me, it didn't. No, and it's and it's actually slow. It is a slow-paced yeah. movie, but it still keeps you interested. With there's always enough clues being mm -hmm. revealed, and like, oh, okay, yeah, what's next? You know? Yeah, yeah. And there's always like weird characters popping up too, right? Yeah. Which always have they always have a, a, another clue yeah. to lead you forward, right? Yeah. The paintings too in this movie are actually pretty creepy like it adds to the whole atmosphere and the general creepy or scariness yeah. of the movie right painting of a woman naked mm -hmm. but oh, the painter right. had put his own face <laughs> right? on on the the body and it's all really creepy and weird looking <laughs> lots of twists and turns in this movie too and especially near the end it starts to get really twisty and turny and there's of course going to be a big reveal at the end because mm -hmm. it is a mystery and it's great you kind of don't see it coming. And right till the end, too, like even at, at the very end, there's like the final thing that happens right at the end of the movie for a split <laughs> second. You're like, oh, who's that now? Yeah, like, what's, what's that all about? Oh, okay, oh, oh. Oh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, and this is the credits, yeah. and it's like, oh. So they, they, they do <laughs> answer some questions, but they also keep enough things kind of open for interpretation to keep you thinking about it after you've watched the movie. That's right. There's only three deaths in this whole movie, which again is kind of refreshing. It's not a slasher. It's not a right. heavy kill count. The deaths sort of mean something in this movie. People who are getting killed in this movie are being killed for a reason. Mm -hmm. They did something to piss somebody off, yeah. right? Yeah, Moves the story forward. It's not just gore for the sake of gore. And again, like you said, it's refreshing because around this time period, 76, that's when Argento started kind of making all these gory bloodbath movies, you mm -hmm. know, Suspiria. This is nothing like that. It's more of a, like the original Giallo movies, where it's more of a murder mystery rather than just murder, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know? murder for the sake of yeah. showing murder. Yeah. Fulci and Argento used to, you know, they kind of, took that and ran with it. This is a nice kind of like dials things back a bit. Yep. But the story makes up for all that lack of the, the big visuals and like the, the eye candy. Drawback that the both of us agreed on right away was the, the cutting of the scenes. Him and Coppola are sitting on the dock and he's explaining the, the history of the house and the family and stuff. And then they're all in, in the house with the girl. Suddenly, like, so, like yeah, that. Like, drinking, and yeah. it's like, wow, where was the transition in between? Yeah. Or, right. or when he finds the trunk with the diary in it, it, he's just somewhere else, and it cuts to him opening this trunk and taking out this diary. <laughs> he's like, well, where is he? Like, I assumed he's in that house with the laughing windows, 
But I'm not positive he was. And yeah. this, uh, where else would this trunk be? I don't know. Like, yeah, he, it's it's almost like he's teleporting yeah, yeah. to like each part yeah. of the movie, right? With no transition. And that's really the only downfall of the movie. And that might just be the style, you know, the Italian style of cutting a movie back in the day. You know? <laughs> so if you want a good murder mystery with lots of atmosphere and twists and turns and lots to think about after the movie's over, mm -hmm. Definitely watch The House with Laughing Windows. It's a great giallo movie that I think is very underrated. That's right, yeah. You never really hear about this movie when you hear about Italian movies. And until next time... Keep drinking! And painting! <laughs>